there is an unbounded main of thought, beyond our wildest dream, from which arrives in every brain, imbued with ego, a tiny stream. Science is proud that it has filled the earth with plentitude and ease. Tame time and distance, famine kill. Defeated drought, subdued disease. But all this in the prison yard of flesh or life's prolonged dream, where senses all the entries guard and make pure shadows real seem. Science is rooted in the dream and ne'er awakens from its sleep. Hence it will of the high esteem it has won but a fraction keep, when with the methods known of yore, the enterprising of the race, begin reporting at that shore, and come back resurrected by grace, to sing in poetry and prose the wonders of that realm divine, where senses their main office close, to allow infinity to shine. Where is the human mind that can imagine faintly e'en the light, whose splendor every heart can scan and every atom keep in sight? Every terrestrial creature plays a part in this concerted whole, and many a form like silkworms pays with life but acts the allotted role. The one exception to this rule in nature's altruistic plan is not the lowly animalcule, but his exalted highness, man. He robs the earth without regard to whether what he does is right, or whether any forces guard her wealth and might put up a fight. The earth is ailing, water sick, and nations on the brink of war. Air with the fumes of poison thick, because mankind has wandered far from her divinely ordered route in search of pleasure, wealth, and ease, her passions and desires to suit, her fancies and her whims to please. Were there no fault or blemish left for us to exert our skill and brain? How could we grow more smart and deft or more extended knowledge gain? The world, when looked at with the eye of science, no meaning shows nor aim. We ne'er can say nor find out why. We all are here, or whence we came. The reason why wise nature mocks at our attempts to read her plan is that proud science the window locks through which we could the drawing scan. Mistaken are the folk who think that science and technology have come to make the earth a rink for acrobatic skaters free. In truth, these are beginnings made to bring about a change profound, and human life and thought to upgrade the brain and lift to higher ground. Above the fear of famine, drought, disease, want, flood, and drudgery, so that to win the trophy sought, we would be relatively free. This is the object kept in view. When heaven the seer's diploma grants, he to the rest must guidance give when the path sharply dips or slants. The ancient prophet, seer, and sage, nature's this gracious aim fulfilled, and one can find on many a page of holy scriptures this note trilled. O oh, skeptic, you have done much harm by your precipitate comments. You know not how you flex your arm or cognize objects and events but only to parade your skill and wit in arguing you rush among the erudite to sit a trait which ought to make you blush they know not that our tender brain is mounting up a hard ascent and we must vigilant remain a wrong direction to prevent a huge securely fastened weight suspended from an urchin's neck would soon deformities create a beauty of the figure wreck this is what modern pressures do without our knowledge to our brains. And with that, to our thinking too, while we collect material gains. This grave neglect to this is due, that knowledge often takes it ill to be told what is plain and true, that our brain is evolving still. Convinced that what he says is right, as dogma not a proven fact, for he cannot throw any light on how mind does on brain react. 
nor has the least awareness of what fuels mind. And how is it? He does not know what marks off a genius from a normal wit. Knowledge is as much in the dark about the destiny of man as nurslings toddling in the park about their city's master plan. We must remember when we dwell on evolution that in man the ascent cannot be made pell-mell but in accordance with some plan and that the aim is he should grow in noble traits and qualities and not a disproportion show leading to freaks and oddities. Temporal knowledge ne'er can find however oceanic it might grow. What model nature has in mind? What changes future man will show? For when they lastly reach the peak with their hard efforts led by grace. Nature's low voice through them will speak to guide the still evolving race. It is a stupid intellect which did away with this defense against a common grave defect applauded by intelligence. Unknown to her, which bars the way to kingdoms far beyond her dreams. Nature has kept for man to sway, if not engorged with earthly creams. This is, in fact, the principle on which religious quest is based, to be one with the cosmic will, until the ego, nigh a face, becomes a thin, transparent veil, when soul, in tune now with the all, can mark a coming stormy gale and sound the alarm at nature's call. The object of faith is to bring this true awareness to the soul, free of the elusive sheaths which cling to it in its embodied role, a timeless self-effulgent orb that can put sun to shame at noon, did not the sheaths its light absorb, performs as if sunk in a swoon, the part it is ordained to act, unconscious of its highest state, a deathless sovereignty in fact, until aroused to it by fate, by Maya's trickery held in thrall, dreaming this world of name and form, of planets, suns, and atoms, all conjured up by her nameless charm. There is no way to find this out, no way to wake up from the dream, no method to remove the doubt, save knowledge of the state supreme. Seen from that side of Maya's screen, there is unbounded consciousness. From this, the busy cosmic scene, a wonder no words can express.